And uh, Phil, how do you pronounce your last name? I had like 13 different versions. I'm sure they're all <laughs> incorrect. It's Alaco. Alaco? Okay, cool. So nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you too. Good movie too, by the way. Oh, thank um, you. I love I, your background. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Phil Alaco, uh, writer and director of Five Pounds of Pressure. Um, I kind of got a, uh, uh, wasn't quite... I, I thought I was getting into one sort of movie um, and then started watching it. It felt more like a, a kind of like Magnolia. If Magnolia was like a, a street crime kind of uh, thriller. So uh, I guess, uh, I mean, you wrote this, directed it. What was kind of the process of getting this movie finished and made? Well, first of all, I love that you said Magnolia. I love that movie. So um, thank you for even mentioning that in the same sentence. <laughs> Anything I'm associated with. Um but, um, I, you know, it was a long process. I mean, I wrote this film a long time ago, like a, a, almost over 15 years ago. Um, and it had a lot of false starts. And even um, before uh, COVID, uh, we started, we had Luke Evans uh, attached. And I love Luke. I think he's just phenomenal. And, and I felt like, wow, this is, you know, I, I, I felt like it was, you know, made me very excited about it needless to say. And then of course, whole COVID hit and all of that. And then we finally um, got it made and then uh, started building the cast um, around Luke. And, um, you know, I was thrilled with the cast, uh, thrilled. I'm very happy and proud of the way the film came out and uh, excited for people to see it. So you've done a bunch of other stuff, like you've had other features and shorts and whatnot, but 15 years uh, getting something made, like all the starts and stops, like how, how do you, how do you keep pushing forward with that? Like at, at what point, like this one got made, but like, at what point do you throw your hands up going, this one's never going to get made. I'm just, I'm, I'm done on to the next well, thing. I would say a lot of times, <laughs> you, throw your hands up and, you know, um, you know, um, Steve Carr is uh, uh, one of the executive producers and he has been a champion of this film from way in the beginning. And he used to give me this advice. He used to say, and he's a director himself. Uh, and he used to say to me, sometimes the film you're trying to get made is not the one you wind up making. And when I was trying to make uh, five pounds, I wound up writing um, a comedy while I was waiting for this to kind of come together. And that, that one wound up, getting funded and working. So you never know how it's going to work. And um, and if it's a project you're passionate about, you know, you still think it has value. Um, it's always, you know, I always keep pitching it and trying to work on it. And, uh, and of course, I was refining it. So I would also say the film that was made, it's not like it's it's very it has evolved since I started, you know, until you start shooting, you're always working and tweaking and 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 refining the film and, and as you bring on partners there's always um comments and and notes and and ideas you know as a director and as a writer i always feel my job is not necessarily to just sit there and put my ideas out there it's to get the best ideas of the team that i have assembled um onto that on on the screen so um as more and more people get involved um the project takes on a life of its own I'd, actually, I'd, I guess I'd, that would be a good question. Like, I think kind of broadly, um, a lot of people know what a director is, but like, there's so like the the cameraman's the guy that you know shoots the camera. The writer is the person that writes the screenplay. Production designer is the one that puts all the stuff in the background. Like, what's the when you look at a movie and go, that's well directed. What's kind of what are you looking at there? Like, what's the job of it? Like, like what's the main job of the director if there's only one thing? Yeah, I mean, I think Kubrick uh, actually talked about it being, you know, it's, it's really your taste. You're 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 kind of the one at the uh, end of the line who's like, you know, is is it should it be should that character be wearing red socks or blue socks? Uh, I think it should be red. You know, it's like <laughs> you you are. Um, ultimately deciding on the the overall taste and the overall feel. So, um, of course, every director has different strengths and different things they bring to it. Some directors are writers. Some directors are also cameramen themselves and shoot the film. Um, some are editors. I mean, I, I came up as a writer, but I was also an editor at one point, and I get very involved in the edit. And um, so 
I think that's, um, you know, your day to day as you're making all of those decisions. And then of course, that's on the bigger um, uh, uh, trajectory of the film. But then of course, you're also creating the environment. And for me, I feel like a big part of my job is to create the right atmosphere where everyone feels comfortable, feels um, empowered and feels uh, safe to do their best work. I've, I've always done my best work when I feel in the right environment. So I feel like it's another important aspect of being a director. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's so many aspects to that specific job from, you know, from pitching it from uh, right. Even, even if you're not the writer, you're still creating and, and developing the script. So it, it, it's very, you know, uh, and, and different directors work in different ways. I mean, some directors are like, you know, very tough and some are, uh, you know, I like to be, uh, I would say, I, I like it to be fun. I like that to be a good experience. I feel like if you're having a great time and you're doing, feeling empowered to do good work, it's going to show up on the screen. Yeah, you don't you don't strike me as one that a hole director is where it's like that Phil guy. Geez, I'll never work with him again. <laughs> I hope I hope not, but I don't know. You know, you might you might get comments after this and be like, yeah, he's an a hole. <laughs> <laughs> so I see I see a bunch of uh, guitars in your background. I'm guessing yeah. uh, I'm guessing you're quite musical, and the music in this really good. And I haven't seen the truth about lies, but I saw that you had uh, the one of the BC Boys did the music for that. So like just. I'm assuming music's very important, as it is in any movie, but yeah. uh, for I assume for you especially that music's really important. Well, I had a, a career as a, a musician and a recording artist in my 20s to 30s. Um, I was uh, signed and in a band called Law and & Order and then in, on MCA. And then I was on Island Def Jam with um, a band called Dogma. So that was my, my first career. Um, I think I was signed at 22. And um, so music was all I thought I was going to be doing. Um, but I always loved film. I think, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood and like in the film, I grew up in that kind of world. So I didn't I wasn't really aware of a lot of I wouldn't even know how film was made back then, you know, but I could see musicians. I'd be like, oh, I could see those, you know, people playing the instruments. I could do that. I would thought anyway. Um, but um, but I, I've always been uh, in love with film. And I think I approached filmmaking the same way I did putting bands together. It was casting and, you know, but finding the people directing the the vision and then trying to uh, create what that record is felt a lot like the production of making a, a movie when I finally moved over to film, which, you know, I think took me a long time to find. That's really what I really excites me. Do you got your sort of filmmaking band, so to speak, that like uh, with previous movies and then more movies going forward, like, Nope. This is uh, this is a cinematographer. This is editor. I'm bringing with me on all of them. Or, uh, you know, you know. Yeah, you know, you definitely have people that you want to bring with you, and and people you want to work with again. Um, but you know, sometimes I think that's also what's exciting about film. You know, when I was in a band, you you had no choice. You know that you are the product. You are the band. But one of the exciting things about film is that. You finish it and then the next one is a whole new thing, whole new challenge. And you hope to always bring people that you feel like you work well, uh, you want to have them on board. But sometimes they're not, you know, they're booked on something else. And, and you know, so you never know how it's all going to come together. I think I've kind of embraced that the older I get is like the, um, you know, when you're young, you're looking more for um stability you know <laughs> you want to you're looking for more security as i got older i realized it's that's an illusion anyway um so might as well throw yourself into the unknown and usually it's a, a very exciting uh ride embrace the open relationship so to yeah. speak <laughs> yeah you don't have a choice so a lot of time <laughs> don't have a choice but i tell you with, the, with this crew i loved the crew i loved everyone we worked with I, I would be very fortunate if we um were able to work together again um and uh i'm really proud of what we were able to do um and the challenges that we you know we faced making the film so uh what other projects are you maybe 13 years into and we'll see something <laughs> pop up and in, in well, it's funny i was writing another film uh when this one uh, 
finally came together. And that's a total different genre. It's a sci-fi. And and oh, then nice. I have a film I'm working on. So I I hope um, somebody's excited to help me make another one. Uh, and uh, I would say I, I do like, I'd say the thing, you know, because my other one's a comedy. This one is a thriller, drama, action kind of vibe. And I feel like um, I do like the idea of, um, what makes us human. I like, I'm always looking at that through that lens, you know? Um, and I like the idea of ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. I, I, those are the films that excite me, uh, and, and, and make me think. So that's what I try to gravitate, what, what I naturally gravitate towards. So like when, when you, Right. Do you start like with the broader idea, like, ooh, what if a helicopter exploded on a dog and then start finding the human element within that? Or do you start you know, with the human element and try to fit I, it into a genre? You know, it, it's different. Um, sometimes um, you have, you know, a whole film come to you like an idea, you know, and endings are really important to me. I, I love Twilight Zones. I love paradigm shifts. I, I, I love uh, films that by the time I get to the end, it reveals something that I didn't see coming or makes me look at the film in a different way. Um, and um, sometimes it's that end that grabs me. Um, in this particular film, I wrote it without knowing where I was going, you know? Um, so it was more of a, a, a stream of consciousness. And then, a, a, you know, you kind of try to get in a zone where you feel like you're in an antenna picking something up. I, I don't, you know, just that's the feeling of it, you know, as a writer. And uh, and then this took me on this journey. And then uh, I remember by the time I got to the ending, I didn't even know where it was going, you know. So I felt like I was watching the movie when I was writing, which that's a fun experience, too. So you never know how it's going to come together. You know, you just keep trying to put yourself in a place where either you have something that compels you to sit in the writing room, so to speak, at your computer, or you're sitting there forcing yourself, like, I'm going to just keep writing until something happens, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, uh, we have a uh, what's in the box segment, and in the box uh, is just a bunch of movies in there, and we pull one out every week to watch for the following week, and we have people put movies into the box. These are either movies that are personal to you or a movie that's like – this movie's so good and no one talks about it. Why? Like, I, I wish more people would see that. What, what's a movie you would like to put into the box? Okay. Um, um, uh, you ever, there's a film called the, the ninth configuration. Um, it's, a uh, uh, William Blatty who wrote the exorcist and it was his first directorial film. And it's a really cool seventies film. It's about, uh, you know, in uh, during the Vietnam War, you know, it takes place in this castle where they're putting all people who are clinically insane. And but but if you are pretending to be insane to get out of fighting, you'd be put there. So the whole thing, are you insane? Are you not insane? Are you playing it? If you play it long enough, do you become insane? You know, so there's this. So it's kind of funny. It reminds me a little bit of like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that kind of vibe. Um, and I think that's a, a really fun one. As another one, I just thought of uh, Little Murders is another one from the 70s. Right. Alan Arkin uh, directed it. And it was uh, um, Jules Pfeiffer script, I think. I, I might be wrong about that. But um, but that's a really great one, too. It's a, kind of a romantic story where you're meeting this. He's t I think she's taking her boyfriend to meet her, her dysfunctional family in a crime ridden New York from the seventies. And it's a very weird movie. You think you're watching a romantic comedy and then it turns into a very dark, weird film. It's very <laughs> cool. Um, so I, I would throw those two in your box. <laughs> right. yeah, dark and weird. You sold me on that. <laughs> uh, five pounds of pressure is in theaters on digital and on demand in the U S and Canada on March 8th. And uh, I implore everyone to go see it. This is uh this is a really cool crime thriller. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to uh, what else, uh, what else you have coming out. Um, and it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much. So nice to talk with you and meet you. Thank you.